Hello, and welcome to the Hawkridge Systems five-part video series for SOLIDWORKS Composer, the top five things you need to know about Composer. Okay, so this is video three, going over how to create your initial default view. Video two was going over inserting 2D elements, video one going over transform tab and author tab. Um, and the next video is going to be uh, diving into all the properties in the property manager down here. Okay, so for this video, uh, I want to set up our initial default view. Let me go ahead and name this view here default, just by clicking in the, uh, double clicking in the, the name here at the bottom, and we get our default view. Now, why a default view is important is because when you uh, reference, you, you need something to reference as you're creating these step-by-step -step procedures, you need something to reference after you've uh, updated your document and maybe some things in the document changed uh, and you didn't really want them to change your default view is going to retain all of your custom changes so you can reference it later on and populate that to your entire document so what you want to do is you want to get the viewport looking exactly how you want it to look um, one thing that's overlooked uh, very commonly is your the page size so if you go to uh, file properties document properties we want to go to the uh, uh, paper space down here and you want to make sure that this is set to how you want it to export now I hear all the time well why don't you use you know standard eight and a half by eleven or eight and a half by fourteen well the answer is is typically we're not printing from composer so why use a paper size when we're not actually printing directly out of the software. We're going to be saving it out as images, printing from there. So really those images are irrelevant on their size uh, because we're going to probably be bringing those into other things like a website or a Word document or something like that. So I typically do a viewport ratio. And in the viewport ratio, I can assign this to uh, say that now we're going to go in here in the viewport ratio and say my publication aspect ratio is going to be either four by three or 16 by 9. I typically set to 16 by 9 because if I ever want to do an animation with this later on, I don't have to change anything because this is their aspect aspect ratio for high definition video. And I I go in periodically just update the default view here just to get it looking how um, you know just kind of like a little save point here. Okay, so if you click on the background in the properties here, which we'll be diving deeper into in the in the uh, next video, we want to make sure that we go through and we set our lighting how we want it. So if you go through and just thumb through these, these uh, lighting schemes, typically you can find one that you're fairly happy with and then we can adjust it after that. I like the metal three lights. I think I get the kind of the, the best look out of that in most uh, situations. Uh, static lighting, that is with that on. You'll see that uh, the lighting is going to be positioned uh, in space and no matter where you rotate it, this lighting isn't going to change. I typically don't recommend that until you get to like a marketing or video um, publication um, deliverable. And then you want to go ahead and trigger that on for, uh, for that output. Uh, per pixel lighting, sure, let's that will just kind of sharpen up the pixels, make everything look a little bit better. Shadows, I could give or, you know, uh, give or take on those depending on what I'm going with here. For my default view, I'm going to say no shadows just so they're not in the way. Ambient inclusion, this is a way to kind of show shadowing without really taking over the model. You can, see, you can kind of see this little shadowing going on in the corner. So keep that low and it will help just make your, your output look a little bit better. All right, again, I'm going to update this view as I go on. I want to come down here at the bottom, set my perspective mode on, and get something like this. Okay, so now that all the settings so far have been environmental settings for this default view. Now I want to assign attributes to the model itself. So if I select the model, I'm just going to go ahead and select everything. In the properties, there's an environmental effect. I typically put that on metal or maybe a brush to metal just to kind of have a metallic look. And then I might go through and I might, uh, you know, adjust things one at a time after that. And so I kind of put everything metal. And if I don't like how one thing looks, I'll go into the, the type here, maybe make this guy down here a chrome or a plastic or something like that. It's a little bit more shiny. Maybe it has a chrome bumper on here. I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll set that to chrome. Um, maybe go around the back. Set the bumper to chrome as well. I can just eye drop tool the front run since I already changed that and it's going to adjust it. You know, maybe this tailpipe 
yeah, man, it's either going to be chrome or that's going to be maybe aluminum. It's, it's not really aluminum. It's just the appearance of aluminum. So you can use that. All right, so something like that. And we get the car looking a little bit nicer how we want it and looking at everything looking how we want it. Go ahead and update that view. Now this is where we want to go in and actually start adding metadata and properties to these components that we can push to other parts at any given time during the publication or after an update. So if I were to select everything and I go to workshops, I'm going to go to BOM, build materials, and I want to make sure this apply to is on selection. I want to come down here to compare geometry as exact. And then I'm going to say generate BOM IDs. Now this isn't for every situation, but I do like doing this um, on my first default view because what this will do is apply a, a BOM ID to every unique item in this view. And so after I update and make a bunch of changes, if I want to push IDs, BOM IDs from this view to any other view, I can do that at any given time. Also, each view can have its own set of BOM IDs. So uh, this is just a save point uh, later on to kind of pull from and, and use. And just like that, you'll see that my bomb table is shown. I'm just going to go ahead and hide that by clicking right here. I just don't want it to be there. And uh, if I click on any component, you can see in the properties, it will now have a bomb ID. And I click on a tire, it's bomb ID 58. This guy's also 58 because these are all, you know, unique components. This guy here, the shell is part one, and maybe that chassis is part two. Any given time, you can go in there and you can modify that in the properties. But I just like to have this, again, as a starting spot. All right update the view just like that now maybe I want things to look a little bit different in this model than they're going to look after update for instance maybe this uh, this uh, chassis here maybe it is um, red you know and I could I can make it red in composer now when I update with SolidWorks any view that I have that's referencing the default or the uh, neutral property of that of this chassis uh, will update back to black once I update from SOLIDWORKS. It's going to pull whatever that standard color is in SOLIDWORKS. It's going to overwrite the properties in Composer. However, because I'm creating this default view, I can uh, this default view will stay red because uh, it is referencing a custom property that I just assigned. And any other view that maybe update the property in SOLIDWORKS, I can just push from this to that one to update it. And to show that real quick, let's say that we updated, and uh, this guy here is now black in this particular view, which you'll get a lot of times when you're updating in Composer and stuff. And I'm sure that anybody who's used Composer knows what I'm talking about here. You go back to default, uh, you say, okay, well, it's red in my default, it turned black in my update. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this, click on it, hold down control, select the second view that I wanna push this property to, and this guy right here for update views of selected actors, I can go and push that there. And now the second view is going to also have a red bottom. Uh, another thing we can do is say that we update. I'm going to change this guy back to black. And we're going to go here. And uh, we update. The second view is black. The first view is red. We can also click on that component click on red, say set as neutral property. If you do that in your default view, just remember to not update your view after you set the neutral property. Because what we just did is we said uh, that the neutral property for this chassis is red. However, uh, in this view, it's a custom property forcing it to be red. And in this view here, we're going to have it referencing the neutral property, which is red. So we'll update this view. Since this view is referencing the neutral property, in SOLIDWORKS, the neutral property is black. When you update the property in Composer, is going to change. This second view will then update black. The first view will stay red because we didn't save it after setting the neutral property. I know it's a, it's a mouthful here, but really that is uh, one thing that you really have to understand in Composer to be successful with the product is that when we set, when we, when we say, uh, set as neutral property or restore neutral property, we are actually assigning the neutral property to that particular component. If we were to update the view, that updated view would no longer be forcing a custom property on that part. It would be referencing the neutral property. If that neutral property in SOLIDWORKS was green, it will now be green in Composer and our parts will be green. So that's one thing. It's, it's a little bit confusing with some users and um, 
hopefully this helps explain that. Okay, so that is setting up our default view. And now we can reference these components at any time throughout the document for updating. Okay, so our next uh, video is going to be going over all the properties in the property tab. Uh, please check that one out next.